Welcome back to Nick Lenders Comic Core in a classic less known classics. <clears throat> Episode number 2476, episode 2370. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, first, we're starting off with the penultimate Deadpool classic I have to review. Because I'm also reviewing the very next volume. This graphic has nothing to the main Deadpool numbering. I'm reviewing it because it's a series I'm not talking about yet. We have. Deadpool Classic Volume 10, which collects issues of Agent X, 715, along with Frightman number one. What is Frightman number one? It is a one-shot done by the creator but by the replacement writer for, for for Agent X, who appears in that very one shot. A couple issues of Agent X appears one at a time, and that was it for the guy. Yeah, he was a one-shot wonder. Yeah, and the weird thing is if you're really curious about Frightman. Now, his comic book, Frightman Number 1, was released back in April of 1993. And it's about Evan Dorkin. And you're thinking, who the heck is Evan Dorkin? Evan Dorkin was the writer who replaced Gail Simone on this very series. Well, she wrote, he, he wrote two issues of this book. He also co-did, he basically was one of the writers of the final issue of Volume 3, he did Star Trek Forever, of Volume 3 for Captain America. And here's the strange thing, after these two issues, he of course worked on Star Starling Stories, Thing, Fall, Night Falls on Yancey Street. Yeah, this was an Ultimate Universe book he worked on. Or a feature in Ultimate Universe of the Thing. Yeah, and after that, he did Mar Fantastic Four Marvel Snapshots, which came out three years ago, the very month everything had to shut down. And that was the first comic he had worked on at that point in 17 years. Yeah, he didn't do much at Marvel. He did a book series called Wild Nights, which lasted for 10 issues. Yeah, he wrote the whole thing for that. He also did Ben and Ted's Excellent Adventure, which, from what I heard, this took place after the events of the f f second movie, as far as I can tell. Yeah, second movie. And he worked on that entire book, worked on the Frightman book, Captain America 50, Captain America Red, White, and Blue. I believe he worked on just the opening issue of this anthology book. Yeah, he just worked on this one shot issue. And they did two issues of Agent X, the the thing Nightfall is in the tomorrow snapshots, and that was it. The guy did very little of Marvel. And you're thinking, wait, he did issues, he did ten and eleven. Yeah, he came in for a couple issues. Yeah, and in case you're curious about the Agent X issues. Mostly put just Agent X doing his own thing with Agency X. Yeah, I believe also by issue number seven, Taskmaster and Outlaw leave leave the organization of Agency X, though she herself will continue appearing in the book. Yep, Outlaw. Yeah, Izzy Temple. It's almost like basically the place where I didn't want anything with the character at all. Nope, after she left, she came back with you basically the last couple issues of the book. Her appearance is pretty sporadic at this book wrap up, like for a minute, and well, her most recent appearance actually was in Show the Ad number two. Mostly put what happened is she was mostly put he just takes on a guy called Linda Lidstone. We also have a new character named Christine Gallagher. Who appeared for two issues, set eight and nine. And by the way, eight and nine were by Buddy Scar. It's called the Hold That Ghost. Yeah, it's a quick two-part story arc. And then we had basically a Frightful Man two-parter. Yeah. Which basically on the cover we have Agent X looks like he's with Emma Frost. And she's got basically a, ham a bloody handprint on her butt. Yeah. 
And then 12 is done by Daniel Way. And the last three issues of this book are written by the returning writer Gail Simone, which reaches the return of Deadpool. Yep. And here's a question I would like to ask. Like, here's something the book never has to answer. Where the heck was Deadpool for a freaking year? My only guess is the reason why they, they continued the book for a few issues, because even though I'm sure the book probably wasn't selling very well, because people love Deadpool, and they think, uh, here's the strange thing, Agent X, people thought he was Deadpool. People thought it was the same thing the way it was with the Sherlock Soldier X. Excuse me. Without with just Cable, without the virus that was in his body. Yeah, people thought Agent X was basically Deadpool. And that turned out to be incorrect. Yeah, that was not true. Agent X was a complete original character. Gail Simone created them. It's almost like she created them just to do a brief replacement series for Deadpool because there's that. And she came back to do these few issues and then she left. Yeah, and Gail Simone, strange enough, hasn't done a lot for Marvel. And you're thinking like, yeah, by the way, she left this book. Yeah, she, she was gone for the book for like several months. And what did she do when she was not writing the book? She wrote a series of one shots that came out, well, three of my shots that came out in May. Did she do up for DC at this point, work on Birds of Prey? Yes, yes she did. As a matter of fact, she just came back this book to do the last few issues of the book. And ended there. And of course she also did another one of these Mar Avengers of Gus Buzzer. Buzzer. She comes back for two books for Domino. And that was it. Yeah, by the way, her first issue of Domino. They came out 14, issues af 14 years after the, the Spam one. Show, because mostly put, she was just over DC. Doing a lot of critical claim stuff. I mean, her first book was Birds of Prey. And you can't get any higher than that. Birds of Prey was awesome. Yes. Though she also worked on Secret Six, the first volume for the book. As a matter of fact, this first volume actually wrapped up just prior to the end of her run for Birds of Prey. Yep, she also did the Web of Tranquility series, which I believe she left... Which I believe she worked in this book toward the end of her run for Birds of Prey. Also worked on All New Adam, which worked at the same time as Birds of Prey. Yeah, and... I think after she wrapped up this book, she practically, I think she left Birds of Prey. And of course, after work on, well, I would say probably just after she finished up, was it Wobbit Tranquility? No, I think she was, she was working with Wobbit Tranquility and also All New Adam, which did her basically her critically Wonder Woman book, which while she worked on that one, she did the Secret Six series. Which that book ended just after her run for Wonder Woman. And of course, she also worked on a revived Birds of Prey book. Did it follow the Welcome of Tranquility. The last book she did for Mar for DC was Clean Room. Yeah, but she left after she did the Backer book. Yeah, and she went over to Dynamite to do a really good run for Red Sonia and a Legend of Red Sonia miniseries. And I believe she also worked on uh, the Sword of Sorrows book. Which was really good. And that's all she did for Dynamite. But in the case of Agent X as a whole. It's a very interesting book per se. It's just that basically like. Once Gail Simone left. I think Marvel just didn't know what they do with this book. Because I think the book wasn't selling. Was catching on. So they figured okay. We're going to bring the book back. But we're going to end it like no long after it comes back. We need something. We need hook people. I know. Bring back Deadpool. Yep. Comes back for the last three years of this book. And right after this book got cancelled. He got Cable and Deadpool. Right after this. Yeah. the f And. Well that's pretty much it when it comes to the main numbering. Well mostly anyway. There's still one more series talking about comes to that. And that's Cable and Deadpool. That will happen after I finish talking about the very next series. Which was published in the very next volume. Death Mark in the Mouth. Which is one of two. Actually one of three Deadpool ongoing series. One of the Deadpool series I've not discussed yet. Yeah, that book, Dead Mark in the Mouth, and there's one other book. I actually have never read this book, but it's a very short-lived book. It's Deadpool Max. So basically, 
once I basically wrap up Cable Deadpool, there's still right now there's like three books left to talk about when it comes to Deadpool. Yep. But in the case of next fine, I'll be wrapping up this whole classic book. So a uh, great book overall for Deadpool Classic. Next up we have issues twelve we have basically the third volume of Spider Man's Tangled Web. And what happened? Now, who's the writers? Because we're still the anthology book. Issue 12 is done by Zeb Wells. You're thinking, Zeb Wells, you mean the writer, the current writer of Amazing Spider Man, wrote the first issue of Collectors Trade? Yep. The writer who's got currently the most hated run of the entire series. People hate his run for passion. Yeah, and this whole issue deals with basically Frogman. Yeah. And then basically 13 deals with Asa Kravenov, the son of Craven Hunter, basically talking stories that, well, and Vulture. It, it's basically a villain's issue. I, issue 14 is quite interesting because this is quite cool. We have a comic book written by Scott Levy. Who is Scott Levy, right? Ask? Why? Former two time ECW World Headweight Champion, Raven. What about me? What about Raven? Quote the Raven, never more. Yes, I've listened to the guy's promos. The guy's really good at promos. Uh, yeah, I have a funny, I have a strange interaction with, with Ray. I don't know if it was Raven or not, because this was back in 2019, I think this was. He came, I think this was him, because the guy looked very similar to him. Ken McDowell, apparently he would, I don't know if this is him or not. Now, if I get a chance to meet Raven. Now, I don't know if this was him or not. Just this guy that looks, looks exactly like him. That's all he looks like nowadays. And looks like, like this guy who it was actually rude to. Because you see. I was told to deliver his shakes to him. And apparently he'd pick up right away. Because he's a germaphobe. And I was actually rude to his son. Yeah by accident. Not on purpose. And I apologized. Yeah and it was something that basically. I've been embarrassed basically discuss. But. I don't know if this was Raven or not. I have no idea. Because I have... I've never actually spoke... To, I've, I've never met Raven. Never. Uh, I have met many wrestlers. The only wrestlers I remember meeting... That I can think of... I met X-Pac. I met Nasty Boys. And I believe that's it per se. I think there was one wrestler I did meet. This was like over 20 years ago at an event. But... Yeah. But not really much else to say when it comes to Scott Levy. The guy, the guy was really... I remember him more in TNA than I did ECW. Yeah. But he co-wrote the issue with Brian Azzarello. It's basically about Crusher Hogan. Which I thought that was really cool. And the fact that we're an actual wrestler. Awesome. Uh, 15 is basically the collaborators. It's basically what uh, Teenage I.O. 16, 17 is on my Daniel Way. Good writer, but not think of a story. Actually, 15 is basically a wrap, I think. Uh, yeah, 16, 17 is a heartbreaker. Yeah, it's basically a tombstone story. It's okay. It's not one of Daniel Way's best works, so I'm not going to criticize him for this because the guy has done a lot better work than this. Heck, I consider his Venom run probably a lot better than this one, than this two-parter. Yeah. But what about his issue did for Agent X? I thought it was quite interesting. He only did one issue of the book. In my opinion, the best books he worked on was Wolverine. His, his Wolverine and Deadpool stuff was awesome. I I love his Thunderbolt stuff. Excuse me. A lot of his other works he's worked on, I really have enjoyed. It's just that I wasn't a really fan of this book. Now, here's the strange thing about Damian Way. Did you know he left Marvel 10 years ago? Yeah, he's had a new comic for them in 10 years. And you're thinking, okay, what did he do after he left Marvel? Well, he did some issues of a series known as Cross Badlands. Cross is this weird book where people rearrange on body parts. It's and people with all cross in their faces. We're in zombie epidemic. It is by far one of the most weirdest comics I have ever got a chance to read. It is so 
really weird. Yeah. The whole thing is the cross. People, it just, it is not a comic book for kids. Not really. Garth Ennis created this damn thing. Yeah. I read it and after some issues, I basically just stopped reading it because it doesn't seem interesting. He also worked on Eat True Stories, Kill Crazy, and he's worked on Season 2 of Hit Girl. And you're thinking, okay, so is there like any other comic he worked on? I mean, the last major comic came out was basically back in 2019. Has any comic since then? I don't think so. I haven't seen anything lately. No. Yeah, as far as I can tell, I have not seen anything in published. I mean, there's nothing, nothing really new for him published in the last few years. I don't know if he's retired or he just basically does no, nothing at all. I have no idea what's going on anyway. Let me take a look about this. Wonder way I can take a look and see if there's anything, anything lately. Here we go. Elite Comic Geeks. Great website to check out, by the way. Like. I think maybe Hit Girl Season. Oh, he did work on Nipple, 30, uh, Nipple Nerdy 30, working on that. I think that may have been his last known comic book he came up with. Was that comic he came out two years ago? Yes, I think that was, I think that may have been his last comic, because that was two years ago. His in the comic he did, the last one he did was uh, Hit Girl Season 2. That was the last of the independent comics he worked on. And the last issue, he did issues 5 through 8. 8 came out in 2019. Yeah, and if you're really curious though, how long was Hit Girl Season 2? It was 12 issues, but he left the book after issue 8. Yeah, he got replaced with Peter Mulligan for the rest of the run. Yeah. But what are my favorite comics he worked on? Overall, the comics off the top of my head I really loved that he worked on Deadpool, Wolverine Origins, Dark Wolverine. I love also, yeah, here it is basically, it's under Deadpool. Yeah, Nerdy 30, that was the last book he worked on. Um, some of the world stuff was quite interesting, like it was no, it was really interesting to have a team up with Danny Way again. Anyway, with uh, Steve Dillon. Yep. So, as of now, when it comes to anyone, I reviewed, I'd say reviewing this book, I probably reviewed about most of his time at Marvel. And you're probably thinking, okay, so, is there anything really left to go for him at Marvel? A book, there's been a couple books that have been canceled. Uh, the only books that I have not reviewed yet that he worked on was... Bullseye Greatest Hits, Supreme Power Nighthawk, Amazing Fantasy. There is a run he did for Ghost Rider Volume 5, actually. An issue of Marv Ventures, uh, Star of Slayer, and Hit Monkey. Yeah, and here's something strange about Danny Way. Did you know he's never done work for DC? You think, really? Yeah, he never has. Uh, don't know why, though. It's kind of weird. Love to meet the guy. Love the guys working Marvel. Yep, so, yeah, that's it for the Next up is going to be the Misfit Academy. Okay, next video. Bye.